Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the suspenseful play called Two Birds with One Stone, starring Mr. Dana Andrews. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with two birds with one stone and with the performance of Mr. Dana Andrews, Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in suspense. You ready? That's the boy. Shh. Not so loud. Not so loud. You want to surprise him. You don't want him to hear it before his birthday, do you? All right, all right, all right. I'll put the recorder on, and you're only to speak when I tell you to. Now, do you understand? Now, here we go. Walter? Hello, Walter. This is Eleanor Walter, and this... Speak, speak, speak. This is Tracy. And we're saying happy birthday from your loving wife and your faithful dog, Tracy. Isn't Tracy a smart dog, Walter? He can talk, can't you, Tracy? Speak up. Speak up. Tell us everything you know. You didn't know Tracy could talk, did you? But he can. He knows lots of things. Tell us everything you know, Tracy. Now, that's enough. That's enough, Tracy. Do you want him to hear us? There. Now, the record's finished. We'll mark the label. Not to be played until May 17th. 1945, Eleanor and Tracy. There. Tomorrow we'll play it for, for him the first thing in the morning. I'll bet you're the first dog that's ever made a record. Now, what do you know about that, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, no. Uh, y- y- yes, dear. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just waiting for you. What's all the racket about? Just Tracy and I roughhousing. I wish you wouldn't do that when I'm trying to write. I'm sorry, darling. I thought you were finished. Well, I'm not. You said you'd work till 11, then we'd take Tracy for a walk. It's after 11 now. I didn't think I was going to get stuck. Oh. We belong? How do I know how long I'll be? It's hard work for me to write a play. I'm not Tolstoy. I'm sorry, darling. I I just can't seem to say anything anymore without getting on your nerves. We we didn't used to be like this. Maybe we're not like we used to be. Poor Tracy. He wants to go. Well, we'll never go unless I get that second act curtain fixed. I wish I could help, dear. Uh, maybe you can, Eleanor. What would you say if you were thinking of committing suicide and you didn't want anyone to know exactly what your plans were? What would be the, the last thing you'd say to your husband, for instance? I don't know. I, I never thought about such things. <laughs> shh, 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 Tracy, shh, boy. Walter, couldn't you work it out tomorrow? You'll be fresh in the morning. I said I'd finish this, and I'm going to, if it takes all night. Well, then Tracy and I'll have to go for a walk alone. (laughs) Come on. Come on, Tracy. Come on, boy. Oh, Eleanor, you said you wanted to help me. Well, if I thought I could. You helped me the other day. (laughs) Only with what your leading lady's dress looked like. About the suicide. Oh, first of all, why is this girl committing suicide? She's, She's tired bored. Oh, darling. No wonder you can't make it convincing. People don't just commit suicide because they're bored. Yes, they do. People do even worse than that when they're bored. Well, Walter, I've been bored lots of times, but I've never even I thought... Can, I can see you're not going to be much help. I'll help you, honey. What's the girl like? Is she married? Yes. Is she in love with her husband? Well, she doesn't know anymore. How could she not know? Eleanor, you may not understand her, but you've got to take my word for it. Well, let, let's see. Um, would she say... Eleanor, let's try it this way. You know, sometimes the very first things you think of are the best. Just say whatever you think she'd say without stopping. You know a little about the character. Just say whatever comes into your head. 
Now, try it. I won't interrupt you. All right, but I... Oh, Eleanor, did they fix the recording machine today? Yes, yeah, why? Have you tried it out yet? No, no, I, I was just going to. I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll try it out by cutting a record of what you say now. It'll be spontaneous, unrehearsed. I've thought too much about it. Maybe that's why I can't do it. But yours will be fresh, and we'll play it back and change it and work on it after we hear it. Well, wouldn't it be better, darling? It Please, was... try it my way. Before you have a chance to think too much about it. Oh, come on. Oh, you've got a record right there, haven't you? Is there anything on it? Well, um, one side's blank. All right. Come on. And uh, make it emotional. Convincing. You ready? All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Maybe it's foolish of me to do what I'm thinking of doing. But I don't see any other way. I'm confused and... and bored. I guess bored most of all. And maybe what I'm going to do will solve things for both of us. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, that was good, Eleanor. I can get a lot of ideas from that. Is that the end of the record? Yes. You see, you have helped me after all. Oh, I thought it was terrible. I'm no writer, Walter. It was all right. Well, of course, I may change a word here and there, but it was all right. Really? Well, can we go walking now? Yes. Get your coat. <laughs> all right, baby. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Eleanor, would you mind if we left Tracy? Huh? Oh, why? I, I feel so tired. I thought I'd like to stop at Joe's for some coffee. We can take him in with us. No, we can't. You remember what Joe said last time we had him in there? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten. I don't see why he has to act that way about dogs. We just spoiled Joe. Just because he gave you music lessons as a child, he thinks he can treat us any way he wants. Oh, Eleanor, he has his customers to think about. People don't like to have dogs hanging around an eating place. It isn't Joe's fault. Oh, poor Tracy. He knows he's not wanted. Well, that's the way Joe feels about it. We'll only stay a few minutes, and then we'll come back for Tracy. All right, I suppose we have to. Tracy, you wait now. We won't be long, then we'll come back for you. Oh, we'd take you now, boy, but we can't. Look, Walter, it's almost as if he understands. Yeah, I expect him to up and answer you one of these days. Oh, come on, huh? Let's go so we can hurry back. We'll only be 20 minutes, boy. <laughs> Did you see him look at the clock? I thought I saw him look at his wristwatch. <laughs> Fool, come on. You know, old Joe's got a nerve not wanting dogs in here. Look at some of these customers. Don't be bitter. Well, I don't think we ought to come in here anymore, even if he is an old friend of yours. It'd break his heart if we could quit coming here. You know that, Eleanor. How else could he worry about me and keep an eye on me if we didn't come in here once in a while? Look, they've got new records in the jukebox. It's about time. See what they've got. <laughs> Did you say new? Blue heaven. Together. Gloomy Sunday. Gloomy Sunday. I haven't heard that one in a long time. Would you like to? Let's order first. Let's sit at a table. Make him wait on us for a change. No dogs allowed. He's got a nerve. Honestly, I'd never... Shh, shh. Here he oh. comes. Now, don't start anything, Eleanor. Well, I'm off of Joe, and I don't care if he knows it. Shh. Uh, good evening, Walter, Mrs. Faber. What'll it be tonight, huh? Well, hello, Joe. Just coffee. Well, you got any of that seven layer? Yes, I think I can fix you up. Nothing for me. I uh, haven't seen you in quite a while. You're not going to see me in here anymore at all, Joe. Huh? Oh, why not? Oh, Joe, never mind. We're in a hurry. But why do you say that, Mrs. Faber? Never mind. I'm going to play a record, Walter. I'll be right back. What is the matter with your wife? Maybe I did something? No. No, Joe, it's, it's nothing you've done. But you notice it, too. I notice what? How depressed she is. Yes, but why? <laughs> if you could understand women, Joe, you wouldn't be in this business. Well, that record she's playing. In Hungary, we call that the suicide song. Uh, bring us some coffee, will you, Joe? Maybe that'll pick her up. Yeah, all right, Walter. Well, even if you don't like old Joe, you've got to admit he certainly bakes a wonderful cake. I'm not interested. Let's go. What's your hurry? I don't like 
this place, and I'm not coming back anymore. Shh, not so loud. I don't care if he does hear me. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Where are you going? We have to go back after Tracy. Look, Eleanor, it's starting to rain. If we go back now, we won't get our walk in at all. Oh, Walter, but we promised him. Let's just run down by the wharf, shall we? Then if it doesn't rain too hard, we can go back for Tracy. Oh, maybe you're right. Gee, it is beginning to come down. Come on. The river's wonderful when it's raining. Well, maybe we better go back. We won't get wet if we make it a quick one. Come on. Walter, let's go back. Walter. Come on, Eleanor. Come on. Walter. Walter. <laughs> I'm just soaking wet. Now, if this is a game... This I... isn't a game, oh, Eleanor. Walter, you frighten me. Standing in the shadows like that. Come on, now let's go home. I'm just Look freezing. Look at the river. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, please, let's go home. Dark and mysterious. And dirty. Let's go back. It's not dirty, Eleanor. And if it is, it's dull, boring people who've made it that way. Whatever it is, I'm cold. I'm wet. Eleanor. Yes? Come over here. No, I'm going home. Look over the edge here. The way the water washes over the piling. Oh, please, Walter, let's go home. Just a minute longer, then we'll go. All right, but promise. Walter? Walter, what... Walter, what's wrong with you? Walter, let me go. Walter, no! Tracy! Drown, you dumb cluck. Well, it's two birds with one stone, I guess. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Dana Andrews, whom you've heard in the first act of Mel Dinelli's Two Birds with One Stone which is Roma Wine's presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. To millions all over the world, the name Elsa Maxwell stands for gracious hospitality. Her suggestions on entertaining are eagerly sought, and here's an especially timely one. Planning a simple dinner for friends during these days of food rationing calls for imagination in making plain dishes temptingly attractive. I suggest the simple, inexpensive touch that Roma lends, making party fare out of the most ordinary supper. Serve cool Roma California Burgundy with the meal. If possible, too, dine by candlelight. The tart piquancy of deliciously robust Roma Red Burgundy and the soft, flattering lighting heightens the pleasure of dining. That's a grand suggestion of Elsa Maxwell's. Dinner by candlelight with distinctive Roma Burgundy. Truly an appealing idea. Like all Roma wines, Roma Burgundy is of unvarying goodness. The goodness of selected grapes, guided to flavor fullness by the ancient wine skill of Roma's famed wineries. Serve Roma regularly. It costs only pennies a glass. Remember... More Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Dana Andrews as Walter Faber in Two Birds with One Stone, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> What's the matter, Walter? Have you seen my wife? Well, not since you were here a while ago. She's disappeared, Joe. What do you mean? We went for a walk after we left here. In the rain? She insisted. You saw how she was acting. Yes? Well, she got away from me, down by the wharf. I couldn't find her. I thought maybe she'd come back here. I haven't seen her, Walter. Joe. Joe, will you help me try and find her? Oh, sure. Nick, I'm going out. Take over, will you? 
I can't think of any other place to look. What am I going to do? She will turn up. Don't worry, Walter. I don't know. She's been acting so strange lately. What about the dog? What do you mean? Was he with her? Oh, yes. Yes, he was. She'll be all right, then. He'll look after her. Let's go to your apartment. She might have gone back there. Might as well, I guess. But she was sore at me. I don't think she would have gone back home. We'd better have a look anyway. Ah, look there, Walter. What's the matter? The door to your apartment. It is open. Didn't you lock it when you left? I, I didn't lock it, but I remember closing it. Maybe she's come back. No, she couldn't have. I mean... Oh, uh... Come on, let's go in. Oh, Eleanor! You see, there's, there's no one here. I'll, I'll look in the kitchen. You go in the bedroom, Joe. Yeah. Walter! What is it? Come here, in the bedroom. What's the matter? Look on the bed there. No. No, it couldn't be. I thought you said the dog was with her. He he was. Yes, he, he was with her. Then she must be here, too. No, she couldn't be. Why not? I, I mean, uh... Oh, Eleanor! Eleanor! Look at how still the poor dog lies. Maybe it's been hurt. It's soaking wet. It was raining, wasn't it? Yes, it was raining. What's the matter, Tracy? What's the matter, boy? I guess he's all right. But the way he stares at us... Joe! Huh? What's the matter? I just remembered. Huh? A record. She made it tonight, just before we left the house. She wouldn't let me hear it. She wouldn't tell me what it was, even. She said I could listen to it after we came back from our walk. It's in here, on the machine. We'd better play it, Walter. <clears throat> Maybe it's foolish of me to do what I'm thinking of doing. But I don't see any other way. I'm confused. And bored. I guess bored most of all. And maybe what I'm going to do will solve things for both of us. Goodbye. Hmm. I think we had better call the police, Walter. What for? To have them look for her. Oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> you can think of, Mr. Faber? No, that, that's all. Then you believe the recording was intended as a suicide note? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I would like to talk to Mr. Weiss here alone for a moment. I'll, I'll be in the bedroom if you need me. All right. Mr. Weiss, uh, how long have you known Mr. Faber? Well, for many years. I gave him music lessons as a child. Can you add anything to what he's already told us? No. She was acting, just like he said... I noticed it the moment she walked into my place. She is usually very friendly. And she said something about my not seeing her anymore. Anything else? That's all. Mm-hmm. And you did hear them play the record, uh, Gloomy Sunday? Yes. Well, we've had a couple of suicide cases where that song has come up before. I think Mr. Favor better prepare himself for the worst. I'm afraid so. Well, look, uh, I'll go along now. Faber will probably want to come with us, but I think he'd better stay here. There's no telling what we'll find. Is there anything I can do? Uh, yes, yes. I suggest that you get in touch with his family. I think he ought to have someone here with him. Well, he has no family. Oh? Then perhaps you'd stay. Oh, of course. Well, we'll call you the minute we have any news. Good night. Joe. Yeah? Did the officer go? Yes, he did. But I think I should have gone with him. No, no, no. He said for you to stay here. He'll call us. Walter, have you noticed Tracy through all of this? What about him? I don't know. It, it, it's depressing just to look at him. That's because you don't like dogs, oh, Joe. No, you're mistaken, Walter. I do like dogs. I never did know why you asked me to tell your wife not to bring him into my place anymore. Uh, would you like a drink, Joe? Uh, no, thanks. <sighs> Strange the way that dog follows you around. Every move you make. It's almost as if he were trying to say something. He's all right. Uh, come here, Tracy. Come here. Come here, Tracy. Hmm. He was her dog, wasn't he? Yes. She bought him. His eyes are almost like a human's, aren't they? Yeah. Stop it, Tracy. Stop following me around. Oh, no, no. You ought to get hold of yourself, Walter. Yes. 
Yes, I guess I'm pretty upset with all that's happened. Uh, Tracy is too. He knows something's wrong. He doesn't know anything. Will you stop it, Joe? Huh? Oh, well, I'm sorry. We, we both need sleep. That couch is pretty comfortable, Joe. Oh, yeah, that will be fine for me. What about Tracy? Well, he usually sleeps on that chair over there. Well, I'll go on to bed. Good night. Good night. No, Tracy. Don't follow me. Get over there in your chair. You know about your chair. Now go on. Get away from me. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Uh, uh, just a minute. Joe, were you talking in there? Did you call me? No, no, I was asleep. You must have heard Tracy scratching at the door here. Joe, keep him out of here, will you? Keep him in the living room. Yes, I will. Joe, I've got to get rid of that dog first thing tomorrow. Maybe my wife and I will take him. No. Why not? Well, it'd, it'd be too hard seeing him around. I don't want to see him anymore. I don't want him around. Mm, well, you better try and get some sleep. You can talk about it in the morning. Yes. Well, good night. Good night. Come on, Tracy. Come on, boy. You'll you'll have to carry him. Pick him up, will you? Oh, yes. Here we go, boy. Say, he has got something sticky around his neck here. He ought to have a bath. Uh, I'll get it. You stay in here, Walter. Oh, oh, officer. I have bad news, Mr. Weiss. We found her. Where's Mr. Faber? In the bedroom. Well, you'll have to help me break it to him. Where did you find her? In the river. She must have struck her head on the pilings when she jumped off the wharf. Oh, no. She was in pretty bad shape. Her clothes were torn and her arms were badly lacerated. Oh. We can't figure that out. Well, I guess we'd better go into Mr. Faber. Yes, yes. What is it? Have you... Walter. Walter, we, we have very bad news for you. I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. There's nothing you can do now. As uh, we suspected, it was suicide. There's no need of your coming down now. There was identification on her, but we would like to see you in the morning. All right, I'll, I'll be down. Good night. Oh. Officer. Yes? Would you do me a favor? Why, certainly. This was her dog. Yes? I, I don't want him around anymore with her gone. Could you, could you take him with you now? Well, this is a bit irregular. What would you want done with him? Just get him out of here. I don't care what you do with him. I know you're upset, Walter, but don't do this to the dog. Decide about it tomorrow. You may feel different. Don't stand there and argue with me, Joe. I know what I want. I'll get him out of here, I tell you. Uh, I guess you'd better take him, officer. You, you'll have to carry him, I guess. Yes. Well, it's too bad. They'll probably put him out of the way. <laughs> yes, I know. Goodbye, Tracy. <laughs> birthday from your loving wife and your faithful dog, Tracy. <laughs> Isn't Tracy a smart dog, Walter? He can talk. Catch you, Tracy. Speak up. Tell us everything you know. <laughs> you didn't know Tracy could talk, did you? But he can. He knows lots of things. Tell us everything you know, Tracy. <laughs> Joe! Yes? Joe, did you hear it? Happy birthday, Walter. How did you know it was my birthday? Eleanor told me. Eleanor? No. Eleanor's dead. Walter, you've had a bad dream. Wake up. Dream? Oh, Joe, I dreamt I... What did you dream? I dreamt I... I murdered her. I mean, I... Why did you do it, Walter? It was a trick. You... Why did you do it, Walter? You won't tell anyone, will you, Joe? You won't, will you? I tell you, I had to do it, Joe. I hated her. I knew I'd never be rid of her. And... I am going for the police. 
Stay where you are, Joe. I've got a gun here. So you didn't give Tracy to the police after all. You wanted him here to drive me crazy. You knew all along. You suspected from the beginning. I suspected nothing until a while ago when I played the other side of this record. Now put that gun down, Walter. Let the dog in. Go on, let him in. If it hadn't been for him, you'd have never known about Eleanor. But I'm going to fix both of you now. You couldn't get away with one murder. Now I suppose you think you'll get away with two. Pick the dog up. Go on, pick him up. That's right. Now sit over there with him in your lap. Hold him close if you're so fond of him. It's going to be two birds with one stone again. Only this time I'll make it stick. Drop that gun, favor. If that dog hadn't gotten away from us, you'd have been a goner, Mr. Weiss. And if I hadn't followed this dog back here, I wouldn't have overheard your very interesting confession, Mr. Faber. <laughs> well, okay. I guess I'm even a worse playwright than I thought. Come on, Tracy. Let's go for a walk. I'll walk you down to the station. That's funny. <laughs> Listen to him. This is the first time he's ever wanted to go for a walk with me. And so closes Two Birds with One Stone, in which Roma Wines have brought you Dana Andrews as star of tonight's study in... Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before our star returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. The world-famous hostess, Miss Elsa Maxwell, knows all the niceties of entertaining. And she has this to say about simple wartime hospitality. Good friends and good Roma California sherry. These are the makings of a pleasant evening. Roma sherry is ideal for any occasion, before dinner with appetizers or during friendly visits. You and your guests will enjoy the light, nut-like flavor of glorious amber-colored Roma sherry, especially served cool. Delicious Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. Serve them often. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And the next time you use vermouth, choose Roma Vermouth. Zestful, full-flavored Roma Vermouth is blended and developed with all the traditional winemaking skill of Roma wineries, is made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try both sweet and dry types of Roma Vermouth soon, won't you? This is Dana Andrews. I've certainly enjoyed appearing on this evening's suspense. And I'll be looking forward to next week's show, which will star my good friend Herbert Marshall. In the meantime, remember this. We've got the biggest home front effort of the war facing us right now. It's buying more bonds during the current Seventh War loan. More than we've ever bought before. Last year, by this time, we had two war loan drives. This drive, a seventh war loan, is the first this year. But it must do the job of two. For there'll be only two war loan drives in 1945. So buy more and larger war bonds now. Dana Andrews appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in their production, State Fair. Next Thursday, you will hear Mr. Herbert Marshall as star of... Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>